UConn earns the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. The reigning national champs won the Big East regular season title and the tournament title. Connecticut looking to become the first repeat champion since Florida in 2006-2007. However, the past 15 defending NCAA tournament champions have failed to reach the Elite Eight the following year. For more on the bracket, send it to Matt Norlanders with Dr. Charles McClendon, the chair of the Division I Men's Basketball Committee. All right, thank you so much, Charles, for joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. Bracket is out, and there's a lot of uh, intense reaction over some unexpected seedings. I want to start with two that popped out. Boise State, a team that was clearly viewed by many to be safely in the field. That turns out not to be the case. It's going to get sent to Dayton. Meantime, FAU, which took a bad loss late in its conference tournament, was seen as potentially vulnerable to going to Dayton, yet that wasn't the case. How much disagreement was there in the committee room when it came to the Mountain West teams and these teams whose seedings seemingly didn't get affected by their conference tournament play. Well, there was disagreement as far as uh, where they were placed. Clearly, the committee looked at the Mountain West. They looked at the teams, and ultimately, they got five at large, and New Mexico came in as a automatic qualifier. What we were looking at, though, was the entire body of work. The majority of their best wins came from in conference. They did have some good wins out of conference, but they didn't have those great wins. So it was a lot of debate on where to properly place uh, all of the teams within the Mountain West. So Boise State got that seed simply because of the areas in which we had to look at in all of the matrix and ultimately the wins. From a Florida Atlantic standpoint, they had some really good wins. They had a win uh, over Arizona. They also had a win over Texas A&M and not to mention switching leagues going to the Americans. So the committee felt like Florida Atlantic was properly placed on that seed line. Was FAU on the eight line before it played its final game of the season, Charles? Well, when we go through the process, we vote teams in. We start to bracket, excuse me, we started to seed those teams late in the process. So once we started to seed, Florida Atlantic was already in the field. Um, I want to stick with uh, with what you said about uh, with the Mountain West there. There's a metric out there that the BPI, it's on team sheets. It has clearly been shown and proven that its data is holding teams against it because of the elevation. And so those metrics specifically were much lower than everything else. Was that brought up in the committee room and did that uh, play a role? For example, New Mexico is 11. If it had not won its automatic bid, would New Mexico have even been in the field? Well, New Mexico definitely was a, a bit stiller, although they were a part of the conversation. We did talk about the altitude piece, but it was not a determining factor in our uh, determinations on where those teams landed. Let's talk about the one seeds. The three of them, no surprise whatsoever, but Carolina winds up holding on to the number one, while Iowa State, believed to be maybe a potential team that could jump up to the one, not even close because it's going to go play against UConn. What was the discussion around that final one seed, and when exactly was that determination made? Was it Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, or not until Sunday morning. Well, we did uh, place North Carolina in that number one seed on Friday. We had an opportunity to scrub uh, a couple of times, and North Carolina ultimately stayed. They had a head-to-head -head over Tennessee, and some of the teams uh, that followed behind Tennessee, we looked at their matrix, and we compared that. Iowa State, an uh, excellent team. They had a magnificent run, not only in the tournament, which they won, but the entire season. But as we said from day one, the entirety of of the season is critically important. When you look at the numbers, you have to start looking at things that differentiate these teams. And one of the things that differentiated Iowa State versus North Carolina was that non-conference strength of schedule. We look at the entirety of the season. The committee had a significant amount of resources to look at, but we also had a lot of conversations. And ultimately, we felt Iowa State was properly placed on that eight seed. And then, Charles, when you talk about the entirety of the season, you know, the Big East rated second overall at Ken Palm in strength, in, in strength for his conference there, and yet only three teams get in. Um, the reasoning there doesn't seem to square with what you used with the Mountain West there. How debated were those teams? How close were they? And ultimately, uh, were the Big East teams as hotly debated as maybe anyone else in the committee room over the previous 72 hours? 
They absolutely was hotly uh, debated. And I think one of the things that we want to point out that happened this year that has not happened in quite some time, we had five bids that were stolen. In the past two years combined, there's only been three. So teams that are normally would have entered the field did not have the opportunity to enter this year based upon the fact that there were five bids that were stolen. The Big East, we had significant amount of conversations. Those teams were on the board, but unfortunately, at the end, we were not able to get them into the tournament. Okay, last one real quick. Michigan State had 14 losses. Its loss total didn't seem to matter much. It was easily in the field. What is the reasoning for why Michigan State cleared so, uh, so easily with a record like that? Well, it wasn't only the record, but it was the wins against quad one teams. It was their strength of schedule and the overall body of work as we continue to say. We did take a notice of those losses, but they had some significant wins. They had some really big opportunities, and the matrix was there in order for Michigan to be squarely into the tournament. Charles McCullen, we appreciate you giving some time. The chair of the Men's Tournament Selection Committee, thank you so much. Hakeem, back to you. Back thank back. you for having me. Thank you, Charles. The madness is here. Don't miss a moment of the action on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. Download the March Madness Live app to watch every game, anywhere, anytime, live. And we have got you covered right here on CBS Sports HQ.